thank you for uh, joining this uh, very interesting session that we have today, uh, which will be presented by Balvinder Kaur Khurana and Sushan Zoshi. So they will be uh, talking about, you know, uh, having real-time insights for better products, customer experience, and the resilient platform. Without any further delay, I'll hand it over to Balvinder and Sushan. Thank you, Ajayal India and everyone for giving us the opportunity to talk and thanks everyone who has joined in uh, to decide who decided to spend your Saturday evening listening to this topic. Um, I, I was listening to Pramod's session, Pramod Verma, Dr. Pramod Verma's session before that and he said that uh, it's a patient's, uh, build a patient's keep capital as you work and I think um, this journey what we're going to share with you has evolved over the last three years um, so we have really seen not as much as him but some bit of patience and we hope that we will be able to share learnings with you so with that i'm sushant zoshi i work as a product principal with thoughtworks um, product is all what i do earlier i used to be a product developer and then been part of a teams who created platforms and products um, and i have balvinder with me uh, hello everyone uh, and thanks for coming here and listening to us uh, i'm a data architect and i also work as the lead for global data community in data. I stumbled into big data accidentally and since then I've started loving that work that I do. So I love how we can help enterprises with the magic of data. I think uh, this is a very simple some line uh, wisdom which everyone has shared with us. Start your day with your business dashboard. So uh, whatever business you have, whether it is a simple shop or a large enterprise like Reliance, uh, every executive would want a meaningful dashboard to be presented to them. And and so it is true, even for us in a normal life, I, mean, I usually start my day with my Strava, that what's going to be there uh, or what route and all of it, there's some program. Uh, and just to for a uh, simple example, imagine that you want to go to an airport, right? Uh, and and what, what it serves, what information it gives you is um, wherever you are or whatever your starting point, uh, from there to your destination, how, how do you go to that destination? Say, oh, what are the alternate routes available to you? What are the different modes of transport available to you? How long it is going to take? Uh, are there any traffic bottlenecks? And if you want to grab something on the way, uh, probably it will also serve. That's Google Map for us, which is which is part of our life day in, day out. Uh, and when we, what we're going to talk about today is synonymous to Google map for the platform which we, uh, which the uh, our client was building so we just created something similar for them and the environment I'm talking about is that of a bank uh, retail bank uh, it's based in India uh, and this is pre COVID days uh, digital was kicking in uh, payment infrastructure was mature it means UPI and IMPs and NEFT were there uh, transactions were happening seamless um, and uh, millennials and uh, millennial thinking is take, was taking uh, into a front seat. So what it meant is uh, everyone was thinking more about customer experience, right? And for that, they needed to know their customer. Until then, everyone was done, everyone has done KYC for compliance. I mean, all of us have submitted the documents and uh, we do all of that just for a regulatory purpose, right? But this was a time when people were looking to literally know their customers so that they can serve them better and that with that vision uh, the front-end engagement platform which was being built and that and in order to realize this vision what we need what was what the ask came to us was hey can you create something or can we use the data what we have uh, in order to know our customers better so so in literal sense can i know my customer as that customer is on my platform and in order to know my customer i it, it's not only enough to just know who that person is but i also know what is the person's need what what are my systems today which are helping them to cater that need which are helping me to cater that need right so that was the broader meaning of uh, know your customer with which we started our journey and probably balvinder would would you like to add something on that tech side of it sure sure definitely so i think this is a very interesting way of putting it out right uh, knowing your customer not just for compliance but knowing your customer holistically and at a deeper level to serve them better and in order to do this you need to capture a whole lot of information as sushant said so 
I just don't want the data about the customer, but I also want the data about my systems. And I also want the data when these two are interacting with each other, right? So technologically, if I break it down, uh, yes, the first ask was to build a data platform and to also do it on cloud. And essentially, you know, um, each organization today wants to be a data-driven organization. So for us also, the bank wanted that we've collected this a whole lot of valuable data and can we use this data to build AI driven systems and serve our customers even better. So if I put it in simpler words, the next ask was to create a data strategy for uh, our client and do both of this, the data platform, the data strategy in a way that they grow along with the business and the organization. Yeah. yeah. And, um, so all of us have, I mean, those who are part of a technology would know any customer facing application, which we deal with, right? It, it will have multiple elements uh, coming from business, uh, coming from customer care, coming from the, di coming from the support, right? And uh, different type of questions are asked by different people. Uh, just to simply, whenever I'm creating a product, what is attractive to my customers? What do they want, right? And as as I go and serve them with those products, the different different detail granular level information comes in. Right? So uh, like uh, in our case, say, do we know what's happening in Tamil Nadu? What, what sort of customer behavior a paddy farmer might have and, and what sort of uh, products I might have to build for them? Or uh, how, how do the, uh, the agrarian economy needs, uh, what sort of loans they need and, and what sort of buying behavior they exhibit and how do they interact with the platforms, right? And, and remember, India is a diverse country. Like we have a digital uh, savvy people. And at the same time, uh, if I remember, we still have a lot of millions of feature phone users who are also accessing all the digital infrastructure we are creating. And in order to serve all of them, uh, what was needed was a actionable insight, which is coming just in time uh, for everyone who is going to serve these people. A bank is a single entity, which, which is going to cater to everyone, which also meant that can we cut down the time required to collect the information and serve it in the way it is required? So it has to be more of a self-service thing. So a branch working in Chennai uh, would want to know, hey, how I did yesterday? What sort of loans are there? What sort of things are happening the day before? Uh, what sort of things were happening a uh, month before? And at the same time, the same information is also needed at an aggregated level, right? So all of that uh, were, was, was uh, there. Uh, but this is not enough because this is powered by a platform which is built technically it means that it also has apis and infrastructures all of it is there right uh, which is growing complex day by day so you also need to know that health and what has happened with the digital advent is uh, earlier there was a simple system now it has become complex uh, there is a specialized technology there are specialized uh, roles who are serving uh, different needs in the uh, technology landscape. So everyone has a very specific ask and a very specific focus, right? From business to developers to security, all of um, them work in their own lens. And a uh, few years back, the data generated was in the ledgers or in the paper form, but today the data generated is um, in immense. Uh, I don't know the exact amount, but probably a reasonable size bank's website and a mobile app must be generating a data in terms of GBs uh, for, for their daily transactions, right? uh, what customers take on their website. So for that, it also means that your data scientists have to operate on that data or a data analyst have to operate on that data and make it available for everyone to consume. And same goes for customer facing executives. I know a well-known bank um, in India today who if we were to go and ask for a historical statement, just they just take that request. They don't serve it immediately. They build it in the back end and then give it to you. That's sort of data we are talking about right now. Uh, and imagine if some sort of customer is sitting in front of you in the branch, uh, you can't say that, hey, wait, uh, let me get it built. It's a bad job, right? So it means uh, the technology had to power all of them. Uh, so that's the explosion of personas and the explosion of requirements what happened in front of us just now and pandemic just expedited it like anything yeah i think um sushant talked about complex enterprises and how big they can be and we'll probably touch a bit more about that in our subsequent slides but what you see on the screen right now is just the tip of the iceberg and you know just 
only so many uh, users that we could list on one uh, slide, but there are many more and uh, they also have a lot more questions, right? And these questions and the answers to these questions uh, help them do their day-to-day -day job. Not only that, all of these questions, answers, when you know collected together, achieve higher level organization goals. But the problem here is all of these people are working in isolation. They don't even talk to either, each other. Maybe they don't even know who works in what department. That's the complexity of enterprises, right? And all of these people have only a limited set of resources, only a limited functional space in which they operate. So they try to attempt giving answers to these questions in that limited space, right? They try to solve these problems in that limited space and create a lot of isolated solutions. So let's look at some of these isolated solutions that these personas could create. So we start with uh, you know, the business level executives or the C-level executives uh, who are concerned about how their organization is performing overall, how is their business doing, are there any uh, you know, leakages in their business and just high level business numbers. Uh, they could also have a lot of ad hoc requirements, right? So the data that is served to them is mostly manually synthesized, collated and shared with them uh, on emails in form of Excel reports. If we go a level deeper, we have product owners. These guys own individual business units and they want to understand how their business units are performing, right? And the details that they need is probably a level deeper than what business executive or a C-level executive would need. So they have some you know, periodic data being delivered to them about the KPIs of their own business unit. They could still have some more uh, you know, manual requests and uh, tools like Google Tag Manager, Google Analytics, the data is pulled out from these tools, shared with them on Excel and emails again. And another level deeper, the developers and the IT support guys, the people who actually interact with these systems, the infrastructure components and the services day in and day out. And these are the components which are hosting my business functionalities, right? Now, the developers and the IT support guys, they need some real-time monitoring of these infrastructure components because they cannot afford any downtime because it would mean uh, that your business is not available for that, that much time. So they use a whole lot of different set of tools to uh, you know, get answers to their questions, like how is the health of my system? How is the health of my infrastructure components? So they could create uh, Grafana charts on top of Prometheus data, or they'll use tools like EFK stack. And they need all of this information uh, you know, at the tip of their fingers in real time. So what we realized is each stakeholder is using an isolated type of solution using isolated tools. And while they're doing this, what they're also doing is this entire organization, uh, which has all of these different unique data points, uh, even those data points and the utilization of data point uh, gets isolated, right? So even though each stakeholder got some answers, but the bigger picture went missing, right? There is still a lot of silos. There is still a lot of fragmentation the three pillars of any big enterprise or organization, which is the business, the data, and the technology, there is a rift and you know they don't operate uh, on the same plane, right? Uh, essentially what ends up happening is I do have my systems which are available all the time, uh, like the Six Sigma availability or 99.99% availability on systems and business, everything is working well. Uh, but nobody knows how my customer is responding to this. I still may have a really frustrated or a pissed off customer. And there are longer term impacts of these piecemeal solutions, right? Uh, as we already uh, saw that there is no consolidation, there is no coordination and no one is connecting all of these different dots. Even if someone could do that at some level, it still requires a lot of manual synthesis. And as we know, like human work is prone to errors. So it still sort of generates a very low confidence in the stakeholders. And uh, so what Balvinder explained is something which is uh, a, at a conceptual level and then and, and like how, how it happens. Uh, but imagine this situation in a large organization which operates Pan India has more than 5,000 branches. It's played across all the states. Um, it has. It is not only operating its own business, but it's also part of the networks, uh, like uh, the ecosystem, which are quite there today. 
and it has its own different 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 verticals uh, sub verticals to do the business right uh, running running just like a indiv- independent business the, the size and the scale just ex- just increases the complexity exponentially right and while at most of the places we see that the technology department is uh, horizontal is cutting across everyone uh, yet uh, we have seen time and again that uh, the technology department also gets aligned with the individual business units as they are driven by the their business needs right and uh, anisha in the afternoon gave a very nice analogy like if data is a new fuel uh, there needs to be a refinery which is going to just uh, yeah, keep getting get extracting it out for betterment right and we we wanted to create something like that which will help bring all of this together which will which will make all the data points what we talk about right it's not only about how my uh, how my channels are working how my what my regulator is asking what my employees are doing or m- what my ecosystems are asking uh, or the health of my api endpoint it put everything together and create some something which is unique for uh, for our, everyone who needs that data and when they need the, they look at that data that data doesn't look fragmented it it's like a, a chain of uh, events as it has unfolded right i'm not saying that today this is this doesn't happen but today like balvinder said earlier it is lot of manual synthesis it means if something i need today i might have to request it a month back for that the event has to happen probably few weeks before that right uh, so our goal was to make it easy make it quick make it available real time and make it available in a way that it is consumable by anyone and everyone a uh, lot of places the tech a uh, tech people know like uh the big data and uh, they have tools to access it but for our business people who are very friendly with excel how do how would they access this data how would they make use of this data can there be a proactive alerting and if i have a thought in my mind if something i see observe in a branch is there a way to validate it uh, that was something which uh, we wanted to bring it uh, through bring it out to the solution right so so it essentially was a platform which would help you to ask questions and get your answers yourself and now when we are operating at that level there it wasn't possible just like okay build a point solution for it we needed to think deep we needed to think long term uh, and that's where we needed to see through things with the patients we needed to talk to a lot of people uh, what are their needs what are their wants and while they express their frustration which is immediate we needed to see through see beyond to get all of it in the form of how it how they'll be served it also meant they will they will get something which they have never experienced so we needed to validate those concepts we needed to bring in that mindset of validation and uh, consumption oriented of whatever product we built right and and something uh, the challenge what we were struggling with all throughout right is uh, the data what we're talking about is of different dimension like a grafana giving some or a prometheus giving a time series or a a business app appli- or business application giving its business data uh, or api giving just their uh, standard logs right uh, how, how do you make sure that all of this data is available to people who need it and for that it needed to be discoverable uh, so that anyone who is on the platform can figure out what is that what are the data sets they are interested in and they can easily reach out to it and then they don't find a greek and latin there they find something which is which they can understand so the presentability was also a key aspect there so putting this holistically business and tech uh, was was something which we started thinking right from the day one uh, and one aspect which uh, while we built a patient uh, patient's capital we always had scale in mind and and by that we mean that uh, while we started with a one product uh, one business product we knew that the bank offers probably 30 other business product so so making sure that this uh, this plat whatever we build is scalable it is easily portable and to an extent interoper- interoperable uh, with the other uh, other business offerings as well i think uh, sushant so spoke about lot of important principles that we had to keep in mind while we were building uh, this data platform and a future ready data platform Uh, let's uh, look at the technical architecture bit of it and uh, you know how we actually operationalize that data platform so we start with uh, source systems here the these are those source systems which were earlier isolated with all of those isolated solutions so with the data platform that we were creating we wanted to cater to all of these source systems and also probably the source systems uh, which would come in future so if bank 
expands its business, gets something new, uh, my source systems should be treated in the same way. And hence the data ingestion or the data integration layer that was created, uh, it was with all those uh, things in mind. So what we did was uh, instead of catering to each individual type of source system, uh, we catered to the patterns, right? So uh, we would identify if my source system is providing data in a specific type, I will have a ingestion component for that and so on and so forth, right? So these source systems, they could have different tech stack, they could have different architecture, they could provide data at different volumes, velocity, they could also provide me a different variety of data as Sushant spoke earlier. So I could get like really semi-structured data from social media versus my banking applications could give me a very structured information, but my ingestion layer can cater to all of them holistically. Once this data was consumed by the ingestion layer, it was stored as raw data in the data lake. So I think a lot of you would be aware with this data lake philosophy of creating the bronze, silver, and the gold layer, which is what we also followed. Now, storing the data as raw data ensures that, uh, you know, we are serving the use cases which are required today, but we are also able to serve the use cases which would be required in future on the same set of data. So we're not manipulating the data as we got them from source system. Um, this also helps us doing any kind of reprocessing, any kind of rollbacks, whatever is required. So to do all of this, we had a data transformation layer. So you have your batch ETLs, ELTs, and you also have your real-time stream processing engine, which was the core of this platform that we wanted to provide all of this information in real time. Now, uh, the transformation layer, it takes the um, data from the raw layer and transforms this data based on how my consumers need it. And where this transformed data is stored is also based on my uh, consumers. So if I have data as a service, uh, the APIs that want to consume my data, it would make more sense to keep that data in an operational data store. Uh, versus if I have dashboards and reports as consumer of my data, and there could be some ad hoc querying, some you know ad hoc reports that would be generated, uh, something like a data warehouse would be a better choice. This entire data platform was uh, operationalized using sound data ops practices. So everything that you would normally do in a web application, we followed all that in our data platform as well. So there was in the entire infrastructure was written as code. There was a testing pyramid, uh, which would test my units, my integrations and my end-to-end -end data pipeline. Uh, we would uh, develop against the master. Each commit was deployed on the environments and being tested. Now, there was a lot of thought on the non-functional and the cross-functional requirements as well, right? So um, this entire platform was written in a very self-service configurable way. So what I mean is, if you look at the source systems, right? Uh, if today a new source system comes into picture and they want the data within that source system to be observable uh, and to be uh, you know, onboarded into the data platform, the data team is not a bottleneck. You don't have to essentially write any code. There is just a bunch of configuration uh, for which the domain team could themselves make those configurations and the data gets onboarded onto the platform. Similarly, on the consumer end as well, a lot of these uh, consuming applications were having self-service capabilities. So the business users can decide what KPIs or what reports they want and they could do that themselves. Uh, what kind of uh, data they want in their mailbox, they could decide and they can create those scheduled emails for themselves. Essentially, we also created uh, business users as tech savvy users, so they were all <laughs> aware of how big data platforms work. Uh, this is just a quick view of the tech stack that we used uh, for operationalizing this. So we were on cloud. And when I start speaking about cloud, there is one more important aspect that I want to touch upon is the security of the data, right? Uh, as we were going in the cloud and banking has much higher security requirements compared to other domains, it was very important for us to take that into the consideration as well. So just like everything else that we did uh, configuration based in self-service, the security was also configuration based Right. So when my domain teams were onboarding the data, 
they could configure what kind of security they need. Um, banks always operate on, you know, zero trust policy and whitelisting versus blacklisting. And all of this was configurable and domain teams could choose um, the, con uh, the security configuration for themselves. And same for data quality. I think data quality also is really important for us to achieve right numbers here at the consumer end. And it was also configurable and domain teams could say that what is good data for them and what is not like really good data for them. Yeah, I, another important aspect uh, that I think uh, needs discussion and mention is thinking of this entire uh, data platform uh, with domain driven data boundaries. So essentially uh, breaking down the entire data that I'm getting on my data platform right from the ingestion to the consumption and decomposing it using uh, domain driven data boundaries. Now, what that means is, I think we could draw analogy from the web services world and how microservices replaced big monolithic web apps, right? So we had domain boundaries on these uh, microservices and we created these small architectural quantums and we distributed the ownership to each team, right? So each microservice had a specific ownership, ownership and the microservice could independently evolve. The domain-driven data boundaries and the term that is used is called data product does the same thing to your data platform. It essentially creates the architecture quantum for your data platform. So in our case, uh, you could see data products like auto loan, uh, personal loan, credit card, et cetera. And the entire ownership lives uh, with the domain team. So the data platform team doesn't even you know, decide how do I store this data or what KPIs I need. Uh, that everything is with um, the domain team and the platform team, the data platform team helps them with the infrastructure required, helps them with how to actually operationalize it rather than doing all of those domain specific handling. Essentially, you could also compose these data products to create composite data products. So it's not that whatever you consume is, uh, whatever you ingest is going to be delivered as it is to the consumers, but you can compose them for more uh, evolved use cases and more evolved consumers. Uh, and it was interesting, right? Because while we were working on um, this uh, architecture and this data platform, uh, ThoughtWorks uh, was also coming up with uh, this novel approach of creating uh, data platforms using data mesh. And data mesh is essentially a network of these different data products, right? The important thing to note here is uh, we're not going back to that silos again. So some of you might feel that, you know, we came from uh, collecting all of the data together in one place and now we are going back and distributing the data. So it's not that. By domain boundaries, we don't want to create plain data sets, but what we want to create is products and looking at data as products and a product would have certain attributes, right? So those attributes are expected out of these data products. So things like discoverability, addressability. So if I come to my data platform and I want to understand where does this data X come from, I should be able to do that uh, using the discoverability attribute of my data products. And there's a lot of literature available around data mesh and data uh, products on, on the net. And uh, you guys can go ahead and look at it. So what next? Uh, I think uh, we are at a very exciting juncture. Uh, we've done a lot of this base work and the platform and the framework is ready. And now there is uh, you know, time to do more exciting things. So we want to increase the self-service expect of the platform even more. Uh, so there would be data governance and you know authentication and authorization aspects of it, which would be also made a self-service to the domain teams. We want to move into the AI direction as well as um, I spoke about earlier in the ask. So anomaly detection and alerting. So if something is not going right, instead of reacting to that problem, can I proactively alert the relevant stakeholders that you know what this is something. Uh, abnormal or not something that is expected of the system and can we look at it adaptive journey completions i think sushant also spoke about india has like huge demography right we have people who are very tech savvy and we have people who are still using feature phones right so how do we create journeys which are adaptive so for 
you know, type A of customer, can I have a completely digital journey versus someone who's not very tech savvy, can I have some sort of assisted journey and can I do it in the real time? And extending that further, can I do more personalization? Can I reach one is to one level? Can I do nudges? And also I spoke about domain driven boundaries. Uh, so can we make it even more better is uh, what we're planning to do next. Coming to impacts and learnings. Um, I think uh, whatever work we do, uh, we come out of it with certain learnings. Uh, it's not that we are able to do a hundred percent perfect job um, and that's required as well so that we can do it even better in future. So that some of the learnings that we got from this data platform, I think treating data as a first class citizen, um, you lose a very important time uh, when you don't start looking at data being captured and how this data would be utilized from day one itself, right? Uh, so that was something that uh, we realized while we were working on this. Uh, staying source agnostic, as I said, uh, that really helped in you know scaling to a lot of different consumers and sources and also bootstrapping our systems really quickly. I think we reached a stage where we were uh, able to onboard new products and new fe features in a matter of two to three days. Uh, and timely scaling consideration, I think this is uh, really important, uh, the way we started this data platform. You could say that because I'm working on a big data platform, I'll go big bang and I'll have like really big infrastructure, which can cater to a really, really large data. But that is not like what we did. Uh, we scaled just in time. so. Uh, we avoided the problems that you would have with uh, you know, late scaling. And we also avoided the unnecessary cost of early scaling. So we would regularly take a stock of you know, what kind of scaling capabilities we need. We could also automate that a lot. So we would get that information uh, you know, as alerts that there is a scale requirement and we need to scale a specific component. So all of that was done just in time. Yeah, and then just on the data as a first class citizen, I mean, obviously data as a first class citizen for data platform is always given, uh, but it, but uh, we're talking about uh, a source systems or a platforms who are the actually generating the data. Uh, there's still a huge, uh, uh, in what you can say, the learning is required to start treating data uh, as a first class citizen. And then with the reason we say that is, um, which is the last impact what we were able to create, uh, which is listed here. Uh, is the standardization of source platform through through this realization through these findings we could we could pass on the the way different teams have done the different uh, things same thing differently in in one platform right because uh, a source platforms have hundreds of developers working on it they it's very difficult for them to uh, do exactly the same thing but certain base principles uh, you everyone wants them to follow. So through this data platform, we could pass that pass back that information very timely, and then that could drive the standardization of source platform. Uh, <clears throat> and so far, uh, what we have seen is uh, we've spoken extensively, or rather, little casually about different people using the data platform in their day-to-day -day job. Right? This this meant that uh, a lot of data democratization happened uh, in the, in the organization. Uh, different people were able to just pull up the data, right? Uh, and the one thing which caught my, uh, what you can say the attention is, uh, earlier when we started, uh, people would say that, hey, can we ask this data to a data team or someone else? And over a period of time, they just said that, hey, just let's just pull up this data. And now it could be anyone, whether we're talking about a business or we're talking about a developer or we're talking about an intermediate uh, leader who is who is looking to take some decisions. Uh, they, they had the platform data at their fingertips, which they could just pull up self-service and, and get it done. That naturally led to a data-driven planning and a data-driven product planning. And this product planning is not only in terms of uh, technology products, what, what to build next, but it could also start started giving an inputs to business planning. Like, uh, and we're talking about a digital business, right? Uh, not like uh, anything else. So, so what sort of focus, where should, where should you put the focus, your next focus? What should be the theme of the month? All of those could, could start at coming uh, through a real time data as we spoke, right? Uh, and and uh, one of the th one of the times, uh, uh, sorry, one thing which uh, another th uh, to mention is when we started, uh, we would have to ask the data of previous month just to make sense of it and see where we are going. Right? 
today uh, people who are observing the dashboard can spot if something is not changing for an hour and they, they just say hey something is not right uh, things are numbers are not getting updated or last two hours we are seeing the same dashboard right so that's the kind of a mindset and a culture uh, cultural shift um, i have se- i'm seeing at the organization where this is being placed right? uh, so so just to us to say uh, if you are vic- if you go to uh, some place and you go to google map to see what are the traffic jams and what are the uh, what are the different paths you could take what are, what are the different options you have uh, through this data platform today we are able to give them the same sort of map to the businesses and the technologists to to visualize what's happening and make those timely decisions uh, which will help them to do better that's that's all from us uh, thank you for giving us a pleasure to present our work to you thank you so much everyone uh, yeah thank you balvinder and thank you sushant for that wonderful and insightful session